Welcome to VMware Carbon Blocks video series. My name is Shira Rubinoff, and I'm here with Tom Kellerman, Head of Cybersecurity Strategy at VMware Carbon Black. Tom, always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for having me. Certainly. Tom, can you please share with our audience a little bit about your role at VMware Carbon Black? Yes, uh, at VMware Carbon Black, I'm responsible for long-term strategy as it relates to improving our product lines to align with the threat landscape. Coupled with our information sharing efforts uh, with governments, uh, the financial sector and the healthcare sector vis-a-vis -vis specific cyber threats they face, and then trusted advisory services to our Fortune 500 customers on how they can best prepare for the future of cyber uh, crime and spying. Excellent. So Tom, we've seen the world turn somewhat upside down to the COVID-19 pandemic. Can you please share with us how cybersecurity has changed throughout 2020, as well as what the impact of COVID-19 has on cybersecurity and had on cybersecurity? Well, there's really two dimensions of that. First of all, you have the network perimeter, the, the security that was provided to us when we went into our offices is no longer viable against today's uh, threat actors and the capabilities that they are leveraging. The second part of that is that because of telework, the greater criminal community of the world has actually structurally changed. Um, they are now realizing that because everyone's at home, with less people are on the streets, that they can now get in this game of cyber crime. And you're seeing this migration of traditional criminals online through the use of like ransomware kits, et cetera, et cetera. And then the true digital dons of cyber crime, the ones that typically exist in Eastern Europe, are building very unique attack capabilities and are pursuing long-term campaigns of, of intrusion. Uh, one great example of this is that you're seeing this shift towards what's called island hopping, where infrastructures are taken over and then they're used to attack their constituencies. But even more so, even more pernicious to this reality is the fact that you have access mining forms where you can purchase specific access to company X or company Y for a fee of anywhere from $5,000 to $50,000. It's that economy of scale of the, of the dark web that has truly been empowered because of COVID. And this is exacerbated because of telework and, and the lack of security for teleworkers. Yes, yeah, certainly. And given that, what advice are you giving the security world as well as VMware Carbon Black's customers when it comes to evolving or rethinking security? I think we need to get beyond plausible deniability. Uh, we really need to accept the fact that at some point within our information supply chain, there is a back door, there is a persistent presence. And so we need to really root out that presence and, and begin to look at security from the inside out. How can we suppress and marginalize an adversary who's already got a footprint on our system? We also need to come to Jesus per se, as it relates to worst case scenario. Worst case scenario is no longer the theft of our data or the theft of specific information. It's not even the destruction of our data. It's the fact that basically this burglary will transition to a home invasion. Our, our homes, our infrastructures will be used to attack our constituencies and those who trust us. And that's very difficult to come back from. And so once you lead with those strategies, it is of paramount importance that you have to embrace integrating security controls, um, leveraging things like application control and EDR, doing so robustly with just-in-time administration, uh, embracing this construct of workload security and container security, and more importantly, micro-segmenting to limit the capacity of hackers to move freely and laterally within your environment. Oh, very, very interesting. Well, I have to jump to this. A big hearty congratulations on joining the U.S. Secret Service Cyber Investigation Advisory Board what can you tell us about this news? Thank you so much. It, it's a tremendous honor. Uh, I've been working with the great men and women of the United States Secret Service for 22 years now uh, as a private citizen, you know, ever since they stood up the Electronic Crimes Task Force in New York. Uh, look, Secret Service, their primary mission is actually financial crime investigation. Um, they have been fighting the, the hard fight, uh, the true fight against the insurgency in American cyberspace for a long time now. But more importantly, they're trying to modernize their efforts to deal with the challenges that they're facing now, but also more importantly, the challenges they'll face in the next three to five years. In so much, they're trying to improve the capacity to cooperate and collaborate with the private sector. So the 16 members of the advisory board who represent a myriad of industries are to help not only provide guidance, but to help them truly begin to civilize cyberspace through some of their long-term initiatives. Uh, one such initiative is the Cyber Fraud Task Forces. So they've combined the Electronic Crimes Task Forces and the Financial Crimes 
task forces that they've had into these cyber fraud task forces. And they're going global. They're expanding these cyber fraud task forces to dozens of cities around the world beyond their presence in the UK and in Italy. And I think this is of paramount importance if we think about how globalization has, has allowed for the dark web to metastasize, but more importantly, we need to be able to go after and disrupt the dark web economy of scale if we're truly to be successful. Because even at VMware Carbon Black, we realized that we're fighting an arms race. Yeah. An arms race where the dark web economy of scale literally is in the trillions of dollars for the total addressable market. And yet the total addressable market of the cybersecurity world is roughly $130 billion. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing that. And they're certainly lucky to have you. Uh, well, let's talk of stuff that are top of mind now as well. Certainly the elections in November is at everybody's forefront of mind from in-person voting to mail-in ballots to security breaches and many different facets. What role do you believe cybersecurity is going to play in this election? A uh, very dramatic role. And mm -hmm. as you see, even here in the state of Colorado, where I live, the governor has already rolled out the National Guard cyber division units to begin to harden and protect the electoral system from cyber attack. But more importantly, I think at a federal level, the great men and women of the CISA within the DHS have offered up uh, resources to the states and to local municipalities, coupled with a best practice reference architecture to secure those systems, which should truly be embraced by all this, the secretaries of state that exist in the U.S. Well, thank you for sharing that. I think a lot of people are concerned about vishing and phishing and identity fraud and all sorts of things going wrong. So those points are well taken. Thank you for that. And in the cybersecurity world, we often discuss trends what trends do you expect to see in the next few months and how can organizations better prepare themselves for it? Well, on a strategic level, I'm very concerned that because of geopolitical tension and because of domestic tension, particularly the advent of significant domestic terror groups and fringe groups, that we're going to see more and more destructive cyber attacks being leveraged against critical infrastructures in the U.S. I think this will also be compounded with this large scale, I would say, colonization of vast swaths of American cloud infrastructure, and that greater importance must be played to both cloud security and container security in order to inhibit that type of manifestation. And what type of pointers would you give to those folks saying, well, moving to the cloud keeps me secure, that's all I need to do? Moving to the cloud definitely improves your security capacity to harden systems, configure systems, manage vulnerabilities in systems, as well as to detect and respond. The future of cybersecurity really lies in this construct of XDR, which is extended detection and response. Can your infrastructure use existing IT controls to suppress, detect, and respond to anomalous behaviors that exist across your entire stack? How do you mobilize your sysadmins out there to become watchers on the wall? How do they, you give them a role to play as you break down the silos that exist between IT and security? We are investing heavily in this construct of XDR, yeah. and we believe not only XDR as a platform is imperative, but XDR as a service to be offered up by major consulting firms is another way through the woods. Now, that all being said, we are still in the process of refining, we all, as a larger community, the constructs of hypervisor security, the constructs of long-term container security, because we have to keep in line with the greatest attacker crews out there. The best cyber criminals in the world are constantly innovating new ways to penetrate systems and maintain persistence, as evidenced by the recent Doki attacks against Docker's infrastructure. And so we, in turn, need to continue to, to mobilize, motivate, and share information as a larger community. Yeah, it's true. And that has been a, a big push in the security industry of sharing information and stronger together. So, Tom, we are discussing now that VMware, Carbon Black's debut appearance now at uh, VMworld. And I personally am looking very much forward to being part of that. What are you most excited about that personally? I'm very much excited about the, ex the intrinsic security track, which is essentially how do you intrinsically suppress adversaries yes. across your entire infrastructure? You know, as Carbon Black, we are the security division of VMware now. Yes. They invested heavily in us. And we are now laser focused on using our expertise where we pioneered an anomalous behavior detection and then incorporating that across the entire vast infrastructure of VMware. Truly, hopefully in the long term, creating that gated community in the cloud, okay? And, and in so much, allowing that community to defend itself. Well, it sounds like a very exciting track. I'm very much looking forward to that. 
Well, Tom, thank you very much for sharing your insights with our audience. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you for having me, Sarah.